From the St. Ignatius Chapel at the Manresa Jesuit Spiritual Renewal Center in Pickering, Ontario, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Roshan Lloyd D'Souza, and today our homilist is Deacon Robert Kinghorn. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from the Keon family from Peterborough, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Clayton and Lolita Keon and for the health of the Keon family. On behalf of all who are gathered for this sacred celebration, we thank the Keon family for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we thank the Lord for the gift of this beautiful day, we thank the Lord for all the martyrs and saints who lived their faith professing to God, one God. And today, as we honor Saints Cornelius Pope and Cyprian Bishop Martyrs, who gave their lives in profession of their faith, we too are called to live the values of the kingdom. To enter into this celebration, let us call to mind our sins and seek God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, Grant that through their intercession, we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in the following instructions, I do not commend you. Because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and hum humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered the town of Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly, and he was ill and close to death. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him. He asked them to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, the elders appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them, but when he was not far from a house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I do not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I am also a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at the centurion, and turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, just thinking with that reading, sometimes in life everything is going smoothly, just swimmingly, isn't it? And then something happens. It could be, like in this gospel, a death. It could be anything else. It could be an illness in our life. But when we're in control so much and something happens, we've totally lost control. What do we do? Who do we turn to? You know, we sometimes fake it, don't we? You know, it's so common we pass someone and say, how are you doing? say, oh, fine, and we keep going. But reality is often we don't feel fine, isn't that right? But we still say that. So in the gospel today, there's this remarkable, remarkable story. It's about Jesus and a centurion. Now, you have to realize a centurion was a Roman person. They were occupying the city so they were not really uh, good uh, in with the Jews very well because they were occupying it. And this centurion wasn't a Christian. He didn't believe in Jesus. He wasn't Jewish either. He was a Gentile, which are very often don't talk to Jewish people. In fact, some things would make people, uh, Jewish people unclean. So it's all this. And yet, what did he do? He came and he, with humility... He had faith and he had love. He had the humility to say to Jesus, I'm not worthy for you even to come into my house. Just say the word. That's all. I trust you. I know that. And he had love. But don't forget, he had this slave. And usually slaves at that time were disposable in many ways. There was a saying there that farmers when they're finished uh, at the end of a season, get rid of all of the implements they don't need that are useless. And then it says, you can do that with your slaves as well. That's how they were treated. And yet this centurion loved his slave. That's why he was sending Jesus to heal him. So how do we react ourselves when things don't go well in our life? I think... uh, as I say, it's maybe an illness or something happens to us that we can't handle. We go into a depression or whatever it is. How do we handle that? And I think this centurion has shown us all we need to have in our life, a lesson from a Roman centurion. First of all, he had humility. 
He admit, admitted his powerlessness over this. He couldn't raise someone from the dead. So he looked around to see who could do it. And he turned to Jesus because he heard he was a healer. So he had humility. Not to, He said, I'm not even worthy to go near, let you into my house or to go into your house. He had love, humility and love. He did this for the slave, as I say, a slave that most people treat as nothing. He went out of his way and he took a, a, a lot to go up to Jesus and ask something. This was a proud man after all, but he asked for his help. So it takes love and it takes humility. So he also had faith. I mean, would you go up to a stranger and say, come on, heal my, my slave? No. He had faith in Jesus. He had faith. He must have heard about him. We don't know how he knew about Jesus. But he had faith in this man, even someone he didn't know too well. And he put the life of his slave into Jesus' hands. In his own way, he was saying, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He also had trust. He had trust. In many ways, he, he was saying, into your hands I commend my spirit. So I think these are the, the sayings that we have to go through, totally giving ourselves to the Lord when life turns against us and we don't know what to do. We're powerless. We turn to the Lord with humility and love and faith and trust. And I think this is how we come to the Eucharist each time we celebrate together. We come to the Eucharist with this faith and trust and we will be healed through receiving the body and blood of Jesus. We turn to the Lord and say, Thy will be done, but please, Lord, can you heal me? And we take great joy in celebrating the martyrs Cornelius and Cyprian today People who ex exalted all the, uh, ex showed these beautiful uh, sense of humility and love, this sense of being one with Jesus and giving their whole life to Jesus and being with him and calling him. So I think we follow these uh, saints today and we also follow the centurion. We give love, we give humility, we give faith, and we give trust. And so let us pray together. Let us pray together to the Father and to offer our intentions for all these things in our life which we don't have control of and so that we offer all of them to the Father. For all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We offer our community prayer this month to our Blessed Mother, who through her seven sorrows shared in our pain and suffering. Through our intercession, we pray for the sick and for those who care for them, that both will find their faith and hope renewed and deepened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are excluded in society and feel isolated and alone, that they will feel the presence of Jesus through the acceptance of others and the prayers of a daily Mass TV community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who struggle with fears, regrets and doubts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus came to announce the good news of your love for each one of us. Hear these prayers as we celebrate the feast of the holy martyrs, Cornelius and Cyprian. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, God be God forever. forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, and may the gifts that give them courage under persecution make us too steadfast in all trials through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Cornelius and Cyprian, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, Without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Francis Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called as to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us up last to the Amen. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, 
We humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, since Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit to bear witness to the truth of the gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.